Well, as we kick off our 2018 season, hello again, everybody. I'm Tony Monica. It is round number one for our local spring summer series, and we are geared up for some great racing, beautiful weather, a lot of drivers making their way into the pit area and ready to go racing. Also, George going to bring us a very special announcement at our drivers meeting today. So we are ready to rock and roll here at OGP. All right, catching up with Ryan Rackley. Ryan, uh, this weekend here at Ocala Grand Prix Local Series in the Rock Junior side. Obviously, Ryan, you've ran a lot of go-karts in time, and you're kind of returning back to OGP, get a little seat time, have a little fun. Tell us what brought you back all the way down from Georgia to get a little seat time here at Ocala Grand Prix in the cart. So, I've had fun with go-karts and my dad. It's my birthday on Tuesday, so my dad said, I have a present for you. You're going to go drive a go-kart on Saturday in Ocala. Well, that, that's a nice birthday. Tell us a little about the transition now. As I said, you're a championship driver in karting. You moved up to the Legends now up there in Georgia. Talk a little bit about the difference. Obviously, those cars are like rocket ships, very fast cars. Tell, tell us a little bit about those Legend cars and, and the difference you see in it. So, go-karts, you have, like, overstuck, and you got little horsepower. In the Legends cars, you have no grip. It's just almost like a rain tire a little bit, and it's a lot of horsepower, so it's a good training tool. And it's a big difference, and those cars are not very light. What's the horsepower on something like that on those Legends? Around 145 to 150. You're, you're getting a lot out of it. All right, talk a little bit about the future. I know you want to move on in the world of racing. Tell us a little bit about your future and what you're looking forward to as you get through the Legends into the next step. So I'm hoping we can work our way into pro late model, then go into super late models, and then make it all the way to NASCAR. and. Future sponsors, you can follow me on Rackley Racing on Facebook and my dad's contact info is on there. All right, listen, great job. And I know you're in town next weekend, Citrus County Speedway. I'll be up there checking out the legends and good luck next weekend. And hey, have a lot of fun out there today in the Rock Junior Club. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ryan Rackley. I am proud to announce that I am, I am committed for the college prepaid scholarship program for the juniors and the minis uh, in Rock and Miami classes, but this year I've had it first and second for this competition. If you're a Florida resident, for the last two years you qualify for a prepaid four-year university college. That was a very exciting race, and what a way to kick off our 2018 Spring Summer Local Series here at OGP. As we've seen some returning veterans, some newcomers all getting their start here to kick off the 2018 race season. Now we're going to look ahead to a couple great, great races from the opening weekend and some exciting racing out of these drivers. Let's get a look. Green is up. We're underway. Boy, look at Zachary Howland's head. Going to be challenged early on as they come into turn at number one. Vincenzo Saracino got off to a great start. And, you know, we talk about it over and over throughout the entire day. If you can't get the pole, you want to be inside a row number two. And that's where Saracino getting off to a very good jump as they'll work their way up through the hairpin turn for the first time. Now they'll work off the tree turn. Saracino right there in the top three. There's Saracino. Zachary Howland's head in behind him. Saracino third, Zachary running fourth. So he'll come down the front stretch. But how about Jet Noah? Did he get off to a good start? As he brings the 488, Gianno Torino. Boy, Torino picked up two positions, started fourth. And Torino, uh, Torino now running in the second spot. So 
So Giano staying pace right now as they head up to the bottom part of the hairpin turn. So again, good start for Giano Torino as they head into the tree turn. For Saraceno running in the fourth spot, currently nine tenths of a second behind your leader. They're closing in on Jet Nolan, here they come. Giano Torino, Saraceno, along with Zachary Howen said they're bringing them in through the tree turn. Charging to the front, Torino, Saraceno, along with Zachary Howen said as they head up to the top part of the showcase. Hitting lap number five this time by. Zachary Howitz is going to stay all over the back end of Saraceno as they head up through the bus stop. Zachary started on the pole position. Jet Nolan quickly jumped out to the lead. And again, when they come off of turn number three on the bottom part of that hairpin turn, that's where they start to close in on Jet Nolan. But then Jet able to withstand the lead and stays up front. Again, able to keep these guys behind him. Giano Torino, 36.686. Pretty quick lap time for the second place cart of Giano Torino. Little warning coming out. Looks like that is for Zachary Hollins head. As they head up through the bus stop, we'll hit lap number six in the books. Jimmy Cabrera just turned fast time. Jimmy with a 36.353. Yeah, remember, Jimmy starting way in the back of the field. Checking on Jimmy right now. He's running eight, 4.6 seconds behind your leader. Jimmy with a 36.353 for Jimmy Cabrera. Jimmy started outside of row number one on the pre-finals. We touched on it earlier. Little altercation, shoved him to the outside, was able to get the cart going. Started deep in the field. So we'll hit lap number seven in the books this time by. That'll bring us to halfway. Jet Nolan, your leader. Triano running second. Howland's head third. Saraceno running fourth, Farshed Begary fifth, Hoffman sixth, Jimmy Cabrera up to seventh, Michael Stevens coming from the back of the field. He's being scored eighth. Michael starting 17th, now running eighth. Nick Trumbull ninth, Thomas 10th, Hilton running 11th, Sardi running 12th, McDonough 13th, Sasha Toronto 14th, Lowell running 15th. Those are a couple Masters driver, Mike Crook 16th as they make their way around. Currently, fast time going to Zachary Holland said with a 36-3-2-5 for Zachary. As they come in to the top of the showcase, we'll get two to go this time by. Zachary Holland said, your leader, Saraceno. Then you got the 488 of Torino. So it looks like trouble now being reported for Jet Nolan. So trouble with your Early race leader, Jet Nolan in a 4-5-0, gonna drop out of it here with two to go. Geez, talk about heartbreak, youngster. And a good run going. Early race leader was right there for a podium finish. So trouble for Jet Nolan. So here comes Zachary Holland's head off the top part of the showcase, and he'll get the white flag this time by. Saraceno running second, Torino running third. How about the 481 of Jimmy Cabrera coming all the way from, I believe it was the uh, 13th starting position right now. Jimmy, he needs a couple more laps as he's running fourth. A good run there for Jimmy Cabrera. He's got Stevens also running sixth. Michael Stevens started in the 17th position. And got to finish out with a top 10 as your leader, Zachary Hollins said. He'll make his way up through the top of the show. Case Bryant's got checker flag in hand. Here comes your shifter, Rock Senior winner, Zachary Hollinshead, unofficially grabs the win. Saraceno will grab that second spot, followed by Torino grabbing that third place position. There's your three podium finishers. And Tyler Maxim, Arias Dumagent, row two. Sebastian Montoya, Caleb Bacon in row number three. Anybody's game as they come down the front stretch. Brian likes what he sees, gonna let him go. Green is up, we're underway. Heavy traffic, boy, they are side by side. Rows four, five, six, seven, eight, as they'll shuffle down single file into turn two. Trouble, a couple cars gonna get the carts get together. In turn number two, it looks like everybody able to come through there. And now your leaders are work off the top part of the hairpin turn. Tyler Gonzalez, early race leader, your pole sitter. Tyler gonna work his way up through the showcase. Look at this. Side by side, a little movement now coming up through the top of the showcase as they'll come down the front stretch. That'll be the 172 of Connor Zilich. He is on a move now. 
Connor moves up to third. He just picked up four positions. So on a mission, a championship driver, Connor Zillage. Connor, boy, really making time now as he heads up through the bottom part of the hairpin turn. So areas to major and got the power right now. He's got plenty of time. Last time by, the major scored in the top five. So no doubt about it, he's got the horses. You see six drivers off the tree turn, single file. Montoya all over the back end of Tyler Gonzalez. Now looks like they have flip flop for the top spot with Montoya up front. Here comes Tyler Gonzalez. Does he have enough room? And Tyler able to snatch it right back from Montoya. As they continue to go back and forth, we'll sort them out as they come back the next time by. It looks like Montoya was able to make it work coming up through the hairpin turn. We'll check them out as they come up through the tree turn. They are just moving around. Montoya, we know, is currently running in that second position. Good battle for third as they come down the front stretch. So it is Tyler, your leader, and then they are side by side. What a battle for third. You've got five carts mixing it up through the bus stop. So up front, Gonzalez, your leader, Montoya second, Dumajan up third. Connor Zilich picks up another spot. He'll move the fourth, Reese Gold fifth. Caleb Bacon able to gain a spot. Caleb back up in the seventh. In the meantime, Caleb Bacon turns quick time 37, 717. Sebastian Montoya. Man, moving along the 799 of Dumajan. So seven down, seven to go. Gonzalez, your leader. Sebastian Montoya running second. Arias Dumajan running third. Reese Gold fourth. Connor Zilwich fifth. Running six, Tyler Maxim, seventh, it'll be Caleb Bacon. Peyton McDonough running eight, ninth, it'll be Hayden Jones, tenth, it'll be Simpson. Ugo Kachuku running in the 11th spot. Gunnar Bischoff, 12th, Aston Chilton running 13th. Trasini running 14th. Dylan Christie running 15th, Peyton McDonough. Again, as we said, running in the eighth spot. Then you got Charlie Ayers and Tyler McIntyre. Eight laps in, Tyler Gonzalez showing the way as we hit lap number eight in the books. Tyler in through the bus stop. So your leader, Tyler Gonzalez, gonna come across the line. We'll check that spot. It is now DeMajan running third. Montoya, oh, correct that, Arias DeMajan running second. Montoya third, Connor Zilwich fourth. Tyler Maxim running fifth. Caleb Bacon with quick time, 37-471. So Arias DeMajan running in the second position. Been a good day for Ayers Dumajan. He started in the fourth spot. He's really had to work on some tough cookies right now to get himself in that second position. Now the question is, does he have enough time? You see him hopping around in the seat, coming up through the showcase. As Brian gonna show him two to go. You see him tucking that head down, trying to get any advantage possible. Currently about a half a second behind Tyler Gonzalez. Field gonna get the white flag this time by. Here comes Tyler down the front stretch. Again, moving up into third, Connor Zillage looking to grab a podium here this afternoon. Caleb Bacon, 37-437. Boy, that cart is just on the move. Caleb Bacon right now with quick time, 37-437. Caleb being scored in the sixth position. So Tyler Gonzalez, what he's done many a times here at Ocala Grand Prix. Jumping up to that top spot. Looking to grab the win here this evening as he'll work his way up through the showcase. Tyler Gonzalez in the two, five, seven. He'll work down the front stretch. Tyler, your X-30 junior winner. Grabbing a podium finish. Arias to Major Connor Zillage coming home third. Montoya fourth. How about Caleb Bacon in the last two laps? Just grabbed two positions to put him in the top five. Tyler Maxim sixth. Reese Gold seventh. Ugo Kachuku picks up eighth, Hayden Jones ninth, Peyton McDonough will pick up 10th, Giffen Simpson 11th, Gunnar Bischoff 12th, Aston Chilton grabbing the 13th spot, 14th it'll be Dylan Christie, picking up 15th is Peyton McDonough, Charlie Ayers will wrap up that 16th spot, followed by Tyler McIntyre, and seven laps down, finishing on the 18th position, Santiago Trissini. Very exciting racing out of a couple top, top classes here at OGP. 
what bright futures these youngsters have. Now let's look ahead to one of our touring series that made a stop here at the track. This is the Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour. Very exciting, drivers coming from all around the world to race here. As we go under the tent, we'll chat with a couple of those drivers who are in the race this weekend. taken out in the last uh, race by a competitor. Now he has to start in the back. So we got knocked out of the pre-final. Now we're starting from the back. Gonna come on. We've been fast this whole weekend, so hopefully we can get it rolling again and go win the final maybe. See how it goes. for the, the, the pre-final, um, I had another driver come in contact with me going into corner seven. Um, so eventually I, I put a, a, like a huge like damper on things, the, the whole championship and everything. I mean, I had a really good opportunity to go and win it, but um, the opportunity kind of like, it, it, it shot me down. Like, we are planning on getting the, 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 the championship. If I would have won the pre-final and final, it would have been a good opportunity for me to get the ticket to go over to Europe. Kid's good. As long as he keeps his mind about it, he'll be all right. As long as he's not too pissed off, which he is right now, so that's why he's not in here. <laughs> so uh, me and Austin have been on the team for a little bit before this. Um, he rejoined for this race, and. Uh, it definitely helps since he's a veteran on the team and in shifter class, so we get to share a lot of data and information, and it's very helpful on the track. We go out there, um, we definitely work together. We don't drive each other dirty. Everything's clean, and we push to get to the front. Yeah, we've been working with Stacker Tolerance Head this week, OGP, and uh, he's had the speed this week, always top five in speed, and uh, his major problem was just working on him, getting on the starts, but we got that down. And he's starting fifth in the final, and you know he's new to shifter racing. He's been running tag, tag, and all the other classes his whole life, and just getting used to the clutch. And he's been struggling with that a little bit, but uh, in the pre-final he got that down, and so he'll get a good start in the final, and we'll see what happens. Throughout the weekend, we started off first and second. I was off pole, um, less than a tenth. Throughout the heats, I started second, didn't get a good jump, so I fell back to about eighth in each heat. Had to work my way back up to seventh. Got a penalty in the first one. Started eighth for the pre-final. In the pre-final, I got up to fifth, so we should be good for the final. about that run. Uh, there obviously were slower guys in front of me. Um, a lot of contact and it just didn't go my way. So rolling into turn one, got an okay start, rolled with everybody else, went through turn one, a couple cars got together in front of us, we ended up underneath of them, and just ended the weekend really badly. Overall, I think we'll be better going to Orlando, try to get it sorted out for there and uh, hopefully go for a win. Great insight from really the drivers, the coaches and mechanics here at OGP as they work with Rock Cup USA Florida Winter Tour here this month. Now the big concern in karting is always safety. How safe is karting? Well, we're going to go in depth exactly what you need to wear, how to be protected and how to get out there and drive safely as we're going to be joined by OGP's Chris Enderline. Hi, I'm Chris with Ocala Grand Prix. 
and I'm here today to talk to you about some of the safety gear and precautionary devices that we use for karting. The helmet. Uh, there are car helmets, motorcycle helmets. Everybody should have a good helmet. Do not chintz out and buy something that is saving you a couple of dollars. In go-karting, you need to have a Snell 2010 rated helmet as of now. You will find inside of any of your helmets, underneath the headliner, if you peel it back, the Snell rating for that helmet. Some of the other gear that goes along with your helmet would be a balaclava, something to put on over your head before you put your helmet on. It's not something that I have here on the table at the moment, but it is something those of us with longer hair very much appreciate. Some of the other equipment is the neck brace. Neck braces are required in almost every series, junior on down. Many series also require them in the senior ranks, so your 15 and up classes. Different types of neck braces. There's the Liat style brace. Um, there's the simple foam braces. There's also the foam braces with a small insert in the back. This does hinder head movement just a small bit, but it definitely helps if somehow, for some reason, you end up on your head. Another piece of equipment in my personal favorite is the rib protector. It is a carbon or an aluminum sheeting wrapped with a foam insert. It adds quite a bit of padding. It is all stitched and it breathes very well. This is my personal favorite. The Greyhound, also similar to a Beggio and some of the other makes, is a very hard shell on the outside with a thin piece of foam on the inside. A rib vest is not a required safety item, except up to 12, 13 years of age, which they require this. It's called an SFI chest protector. It's a wonderful rib vest, a little complicated, but it will definitely cover all of your needs for SFI, rib protection, and everything else. Jumping curbs, side impacts, and the high lateral Gs that we turn in carts, it is well worth having that piece of equipment. Shoes, driving shoes. You can wear any kind of driving shoe as long as it covers your ankle bone. You can also wear wrestling shoes. Wrestling shoes are a cheaper alternative to actual car racing shoes. They still give you the feel by having the thin bottom soles, and they will also give you the ankle protection that you need. Shoes, definitely a must to have a pair that fit properly. You can't feel a pedal, brake, or throttle if you're not wearing the right size shoes. Another piece of protective equipment, gloves. Everybody should have gloves, a good pair of gloves. Something that is abrasion resistant. Something that has a palm that is going to adhere to the steering wheel, be it a small grip pad, something along the lines of the Adidas, which has a very rubber-like piece on it. It will definitely help in your feeling and control. You can wear any kind of glove in carting that you want, mechanics gloves, football gloves, uh, anything that covers all your fingers is perfectly fine. But I do advise getting something that will hold on to the steering wheel even when it's wet. It does become difficult to control a vehicle if you're not wearing the proper gloves. The driving suit. Most people will wear driving suits in karting of one style or another. The full length driving suit is recommended. It is not required in many series. All you have to really have is an abrasion resistant outfit, be it a leather jacket, a motorcycle jacket made out of cordura or something that can wear on the asphalt. You do not have to have a full length driving suit, but it is much easier to move in modulate your body and control everything that you're doing if you have a one-piece suit. I like driving suits. I think it's a fantastic piece and it looks pretty fancy. 
Some of the other gear that you may consider, long socks, elbow pads. Um, if you're a taller driver like myself, driving a gearbox, your elbow hits the motor a lot. Having an elbow pad will definitely keep your elbow from bruising and swelling up. Racing can be a fun and entertaining sport, and to keep yourself safe while having a good time, you really should look into the proper gear. As well as the safety gear for the driver himself personally, I would like to roll a cart over and show some of the safety parts and pieces on the cart to keep the driver himself as well as the other people on track with him safe. All of your steering componentry and brake componentry has clips, wires, or something to keep the nuts from backing off of the bolts. In the front of the cart, you need to look at all of your brake pedal equipment, where the rod attaches to the chassis as well as the pedal. There is a safety cable. There are safety clips on all steering components, tie rods, steering hubs, steering wheels can be double nutted or cotter pinned. Anything that rolls on the front, the bottom of your kingpin bolts, your heim joints, everything that is attached by a nut or bolt should be wired or clipped for safety. This will not only help you, but it will also keep the people driving next to you safe as well. Most front brake systems, if your cart has them, has to be wire tied, as well as the rear brake system, so as the bolts to not back out and you no longer have any brakes. Anything on the cart that is extra, say your lead, your lead should be white, always white. It's easiest to see on track, and it should be at a minimum double nutted or safety wired if you have time for that. Everything on the cart that can fall off, just make sure to cover yourself and to be respectful of the people around you. Following some of these small tips, ideas, and attire will definitely help you on your race day. So I hope you like that little insight on safety tips here at OGP. Very important, but again, that should make you feel a little safer as you do hit the track. Well, it's been a great show as always. I really, really enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed it. As again, we'll be back next month right here at OGP TV. Again, don't forget to follow us on Facebook at Ocala Grand Prix. Also visit the website, ocalagrandprix.com. Until next time, I'm your host, Tony Monica.